What's up, everybody? Welcome back to none other than Husky FA's book club. Yeah, I know I've been gone for a second, but I'm back now. And we're here today to talk about chapter six, lesson six. It's entitled, Work to Learn, Don't Work for Money. So, this chapter summary, as well as the next ones to come, it's going to come to you fast. I ain't going to hold you long. So, this chapter starts off with Robert Kiyosaki. Um, he had like an interview set up in Singapore. So he goes to this interview, and he goes and sit with um, this journalist, and the journalist tells him that she wants to be a best-selling author like he is. So he recommends, hey, what you need to do, or a recommendation I have for you, is go out and go go to like um, class to learn about selling and ad management and all that different stuff. She got very offended, as I spoke about in other other sections, yo, put your pride to the side. So she got so offended and said, I wouldn't stoop that low. Now what he was trying to get her to realize was she couldn't see because she was so high and mighty, because she had her master's degree in English. She needed skills in learning how to sell and learning how to market. And if she was to go and work for these people or do this course that he recommended, she would probably be way ahead of the game because she learned a skill. So a lot of times, we as people, we get upset and um, very prideful. But he says, a lot of people are a skill away from being, from being, um, you know, from seeing their income grow exponentially. So why would you sell yourself short? He goes along in the chapter to um, talk about how specializing in certain things limits you. So, Robert says in chapter six, um, being a specialized worker, if you're going to be a specialized worker, you better make sure you have like some type of union to, you know, to bag you. Because if you don't, when you try to cross over to different, um, different realms of professionalism, those same skills won't translate. So, he gives an example of he started out working for an oil company and the oil company basically like seven months of work five months off his poor dad of course was like oh my god that's great that's a great job pay was okay but robert left that company he left that company to go and work for the marine corps while in the marine corps he came he became high ranking he learned how to fly and it's like oh man but he left that company to go to another company so he was he was basically saying like Though these companies were good, and a lot of people tend to focus on the pay and the benefits, but this is just a short term. Robert was focusing more so on, hmm, what skills can I learn that'll help me into my next gig? He eventually got a job as a Xerox salesperson, and he was going around knocking door to door, and of course, Robert was very shy, but Robert still do it. But here's the key to it. He was shy and he was very fearful of rejection, but he knew he knew it was valuable for him and it was good for him to know, like, I need to tackle the thing that holds me back. So that's exactly what Robert did. He went on. He went to Xerox and he tackled what held him back. He was he was afraid of rejection. He had a fear of rejection. And a lot of times we as people do have a fear of rejection. So. We kind of be like, ah, nah, I ain't going to do it. We start getting that cynic mindset of, oh, well, this is wrong. This will be wrong. And it's like, no, just go after what you want to go after. So he moves along and he gains all this knowledge and he realizes his rich, his poor dad always thought he was going to school just to, you know, do, just to be like a shit person. But Robert's end all be all was to be into internal affairs, international affairs, and international business, which in turn he ended up getting there. That's why he lived with, he was in Singapore getting the interview. But Robert Rich Dad knew that he was all about internal, international business. So Robert ended up um, starting his own company selling wallets. And he had a company from overseas manufacturing the wallets. He brought them back, got them sold. But he wouldn't have known that if he never would have 
went to the Marine Corps, never would have had those skills that he picked up along the way. He also gave um, an example. He asked some of his students, he was like, yo, why is McDonald's so, why is McDonald's who they are? And some of the students were like, well, they, they make a better hamburger. Then he was like, can y'all make a better hamburger? <laughs> a lot of people raised their hands and said, yes, I can make a better hamburger. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people can make a better hamburger than, hamburger, uh, than McDonald's. But McDonald's honed in on their skills. Their skills is in business systems. So they know business systems and how to run a business system inside and out. And from that, from knowing that system, they can move this, do this, do this. And it's like everything McDonald's put out, it pops, except for the Mac pizza. <laughs> And he also goes into where like World War II generation was like, oh, jumping job to job is not good. Now we know this day and age, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do what's best for you. It's kind of like how the NBA and players are. You can't get mad at them guys for moving from team to team or chasing because ain't no loyalty, man. So um, he says the main management skills Needed for success on management of cash flow, management of systems, management of people. And the most important specialized skills are sales and marketing. Communication skills, <clears throat> such as writing, speaking, and negotiating, are crucial to a life of success. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I feel like if you can master those couple skills, you'll be a beast. But, um, what Robert does and what we all should do, we should always stay touched up on our skills. Don't let them fall by the wayside. If for one second you think that you're a professional in anything and that you can't be wrong, you'll be wrong because things are ever changing. Nothing stays the same. So it, it's, it, it behooves us. It's in our best interest to gain skills, but also refresh those skills constantly. Um, we almost learn to be good teachers as well as good students. To truly be rich, we must be able to give as well as receive. He also gave in this chapter the idea of giving. And with giving, you'll receive, you'll receive more. Um, his rich dad gave to charities, foundations, um, churches, and such of that nature. And his poor dad had a mindset of uh, once I receive enough, then I give more. But... It's like sometimes you can get in that trap and you'll never feel like you receive a lot. So always be mindful, like uh, give back. If somebody wants to talk to me about certain instances, what what is it going to hurt, man? Give back. Stop being greedy. Um, greed isn't necessarily bad, but greed isn't necessarily good. I won't even use greedy. Stop being selfish. Sometimes spread the wealth, teach somebody. So you can reach somebody so we can change everything. Um, and yeah, that was, let me make sure I'm hitting everything. That was pretty much everything for this chapter. Um, oh, I love he used the acronym JOB. J-O-B means just over broke. So many people, uh, this was the point he made. Many people work hard. The only skill they know is to work hard or work harder and get more money. Yeah, guys, if we really want to truly get ahead of the game, we need to nip that in the bud quickly. Also, map. Mapping things out. Map things out. Look ahead. See, see what you need, what skills you need to be successful. Map things out and go out and obtain those skills. Simple as that. He recommends getting a second job for to earn a new skill. Of course, people are gonna combat it. Why? Because you don't wanna do that. The fear of rejection, the fear of starting something new. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear hold us back. We can do this, guys. I believe in us. So, that's it for chapter six. Work to learn, don't work for money. And I'm out. Like I said, things gonna be coming to y'all real fast. So I apologize for the for the lateness, but life happens. Uh, I'm sick of this whole, you know, 
this whole lockdown thing. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but hey, we gotta keep pushing, keep striving. And if I read and you read and we read, then we can make this world a better place. On another note, I holla. Chapter seven on the way. And we almost done. Wow. What a time to be alive. Why? 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 Why?